Test, test. Well, hopefully it's recording my voice. Um, but today we are going to go over the golden section a little bit more. And of course, hopefully you can see a little bit better because of this video. And of course I'll zoom in when necessary. I don't necessarily have all the tools that you guys have. So of course don't follow my practices, uh, but at the same time follow the procedure. Right. So, as you guys know, we start off with our 12 by 18 or our 12 by 19.416, I believe. Anyway, that being said, of course, our first step is the square. So, in my case, I'll start off with a 2 by 2 inch. No, my parallel bar isn't working. Should it be? Of course it should. Right. Hopefully my head isn't blocking the view. Two by two inch. I already have a compass, so I'll show you to do it without a compass anyway. Um, it looks a little light, but I suppose you can see it. Again, they should be construction lines anyway. And in my case, I'm going to take it all the way across. Maybe my parallel bar is working great. That's about right. Not exactly straight, but it's okay. So, like I said before, each of these segments has a midpoint. Now, of course, they should be all exactly one inch. I'm just sort of eyeballing it today. You can barely see those marks. In fact, we'll zoom in for this one. Sweet. So, essentially, no matter what, we can take a midpoint to its adjacent corner, right? We obviously can't go to this corner. So really the only two that we can spread to, at least from the bottom ground line, if you will, um, is those two. So let's go ahead and connect them. Not really gonna take its measurement yet, although probably wouldn't be a bad idea. I'm gonna go ahead and draw both, because why not? Wonderful, the magic animal. Either way, so we'll take this measurement, right, and we can set up our, of course, I don't have my compass either. I guess it is at my office as well. That's okay. If I didn't have one, I could, of course, make a measurement, really any scale, as long as it's the same line. And it seems to be two and a quarter. In our case, pretty slightly under a quarter. And I do want to get accurate as possible. So again, I'll go from that zero point all the way to two and slightly under a quarter. There's a quarter, slightly under. Wonderful. Of course, I don't have a triangle either. So I'll eyeball it as well. Please don't eyeball it. Use your drafting table at the school or at home. I'll go ahead and complete that golden section. So what we have right here, right, is the golden section, right, or at least a golden rectangle. Now, yes, you can derive a curve, right, in order to make that square, but you can't derive a curve, at least from the edge, to make a rectangle, right? Don't get me wrong, we just did, of course, with a midpoint and angle, but we can't do it from this point and this point, which I noticed was a huge problem. Either way, Let's continue, because we created a new line segment, and I'll just freehand it, right? We could measure it, we, we could really understand what it is, and what it should be is, of course, point, or, yeah, point six one eight of this original two inches. In our case, it's one and slightly over a quarter. Not bad. So we can take that exact same measurement again, Right, slightly over a quarter, one slightly under a quarter, and we can get that perfect square. Yes, if you have a compass, you could take it here and bring it over, right? Essentially get the exact same thing. And eyeball it the best of my ability. 
You could also do the 45 method, which we saw some of you guys doing. Of course, if you have a 45 45 triangle, it's really the best way to go. It's very easy with the parallel bar. Pretty close. And at least gives us the true midpoints of this next square. Why didn't I put it here from the original line? Because that wouldn't be the midpoint, right? This is now the midpoint of this new line segment that we got here, right? So we started off with the square, came down, got our new line. With that new line, it created this segment, this segment. Obviously there was an intersection with our ground line from that point, and it created that new line. Hopefully that makes sense so far. And if it doesn't, you can take it step by step, right? Of course, the point of the video. Either way, we'll always end up with another square and a rectangle. This rectangle happens to be, oddly enough, if I were to pinch and sort of expand it, right, it would expand the exact same rate as the original rectangle. And of course, that's what makes it so special. That being said, we can still continue because a new line was made again. That new segment right from this original square. Now with this segment I could take my compass and bring it down right get a whole new square. I could eyeball it but in my case I don't want to eyeball it I want to do it as perfect as possible for you guys. So it's about three quarters of an inch. Let's take that let's line that up. Three quarters of an inch and just taking that same segment I just made and making another perfect square. When in doubt, find a square. If you can't find a square, when in doubt, find the next segment you created and go from there. Great. Again, another square and another rectangle. Yes, it's rotated now, but it relates to this one and now the hole again. Even this one. Right? they all will create the exact same ratios, which is the point, right? Let's go this way now. So if I remember correctly, I think it was over. Yep, two and slightly, man, it really is a quarter. Two and a quarter. Again, I'm taking my center point, reaching my end. It is the exact same thing as drawing that curve, right? just in a different way. Of course, that'll make an equilateral triangle too. Either way, uh, we have this new dimension, right? Because it hit that ground line, right? It intersected at this point right here, right here. Right? So we'll take that, well, in your case, it'll be a triangle. And I'll take that all the way. And I'll take this one now all the way because now I can make some sense of it. So some of you guys, I was saying, you know, just go for it. If you have a line, make it into a line. It can be confusing, right? So as you can see, I'm kind of really going step by step, um, trying to be a little creative about it, right? So we took it this way a little bit. Now I'm gonna go this way and I'm gonna go bigger. Why not? So took it down, we have our new length. It's kind of nice is I do have the previous mirrored image Right, I do essentially have something to work with, but in my case, I'm gonna go bigger. So that new length that was created, this guy right here, can be combined with that original length, right? And that could be our new line, right? For instance, if I needed to make a square out of this line, I really wouldn't go that way because I'd run right off the page, right? And really, you know, I could go this way, but then I'd have to move the camera. So in my case, I'll go up, right? So I would take my compass, bring it to make a square. In my case, I don't have my compass, so I'll do the measurement. Looks about, dang, a lot of quarters going on, three and a quarter. It's probably not a quarter. Small disclaimer. Ooh, there goes my pencil. Good thing it's a construction line. 
So we have our new, at least half of our square. Obviously, we have to complete it. Just wait until you try and do this to a hexagon. Not that we're going to do it in this class, but if you want to, you could. Same rules apply in geometry. All those darn proofs we learned in 10th grade. Wonderful. So I went from quite literally the same length that we got last time, right? Was that new length taken now this way? But instead, I took the entire line and created that square. From that square, of course, I can get the midpoints. I'm just eyeballing them. It's probably a little higher. Perfect. Of course, I can just divide by two three and a quarter. Right. Either way, the answer should be clear, right? We can keep going. So let's let's keep going and maybe let's let's go that way. So I'll take my midpoint. Take that angle to the adjacent corner. There it is. Of course you can make little marks like this as well. It's up to you. Then, so this is where I take my compass, right? Bring it on down. Hopefully you guys can see that. So yeah, I'm going this way, taking this guy, and bringing it on down. So in my case, let's see how long that line is. Of course, if you have a compass, it's much easier. One, two, three, and slightly over a half. Seems about right. Again, it's going to hit that bottom line again. So this is what I meant by we'll just take that bottom line all the way across. Couple things, right? So we took that one across. We have our new golden section or golden rectangle. Make sure those are parallel. In your case, this would be much easier. Just roll that triangle right across. And we can begin to connect the dots ourselves. You'll notice that I, I went a little over, and that's kind of just to remind me to first take the lines all the way across. So we've got a new line there. Again, a new segment here. We can take it down. That's about, if I had to guess, there. Again, just taking that square. The reason I chose that square instead of this square is because we already made that square. So I figured why not make it this way now, right? Being a little bit more creative. So let's take those lines across and, well, I guess let's continue with the boxes then take all the lines out. So let's see, what else? Go take the midpoint here. That midpoint. It's about where the midpoint is. Again, do your due diligence and measure it accurately. Right. Essentially, I'm taking this one now to get that golden ratio. What's nice is it does happen to be the exact same because this, right? Proofs. By the way, I can either get a compass, right? And just do it easy. Or I can do it, of course, what my way is becoming extremely hard. I don't expect anybody to go there <laughs> and measure every single line. But if you really want to prove to yourself the mathematics that are going on behind this, by all means. Usually that confuses my past students, so I've learned to, to simplify. Let's see, three and seven, close. So 
three and close. I could also just measure this length. It is going to be the same. That is where we concluded. Again, that would be as if I took that compass. It's starting to look organized. Again, taking it all the way across to remind myself we still have more to go. Of course, that made a similar square. Right? I can take that guy, I can use my compass. Again, it's not going to be that midpoint. You shouldn't see two uh, slightly squished uh, squares. There's only one true square in there, right? And in my case, gosh, I wish I had a compass. If you don't, it's still possible. It's just very frustrating. Going in there. One and pretty close. And of course, building the square again. So in this case, this guy, based on that one. Hopefully I haven't lost anybody yet. Again, taking that line all the way. Just to remind myself. Yeah, they might accidentally hit other things, right? We do notice those, but those are just construction, right? Remember the main focus is that our lines are gonna come out orthogonal um, and things like that. Really, this is just a calculation for another, not to be accidentally crossed with. Hopefully that makes sense, because that's definitely not one. None of these are, you know, those are only part of the construction. And yes, sometimes we get these nice anomalies, right? What's interesting is that these little spaces are part of that golden ratio, right? They do make infinitely larger and infinitely smaller pieces. Either way, it does look like, you know, we have another piece. Let's let's go smaller, right? We went a little bit smaller here. Uh, why not why not continue? So obviously we have this piece, the piece that we are left over with. You know, we can either take this route, get this square. A lot of things can happen here and maybe that's where people are getting confused. Um, I'm taking a lot of different routes just because my right brain is trying to tell my left brain to do right now and it wants to see something creative so of course I made it smaller here I made a bigger one there um, I see another square developing so you know we might take it bigger might take it smaller either way I just made one here just made one there so let's complete this square first in our case all right Sometimes I, I honestly just eyeball it. You start to realize what a square is and isn't. The little nuance of sort of the optical illusion that's involved. It will always look slightly taller for some reason. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But the ones that line up, might as well. Right. And you can notice those, those lineups too when we extend these lines a little bit and we start to go, oh, well, maybe there's some space in there. Right. Either way, coming across nicely. It should look somewhat, you know, obviously if you do this many different bigs and smalls, um, you're going to get uh, a bit more random results. Right. Not that you can really produce random, but somewhat more creative. By the way, it looks like this square wants to be answered, and I bet you, I bet you it's that same line because, of course, the squares are similar but quite different. I actually kind of forgot what this line was. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe I have to go back to the video myself. Oh, it's the original. That's right. And some of those other ones came back down. Nice. Answer my own question. So we'll take that again. I do want to make sure though. Don't want to guess. It's about two and three, two and a half eighths. Two and what do you know? Three and a half eighths. Called it. Okay. Go ahead and zoom. 
That goes across too. And that new measurement that we concluded seems to complete another. Right? And this is what I meant by that little click, right? That you're gonna just be like, okay, I got it, right? Something lined up with itself and it doesn't seem too random. really helps to have that triangle, by the way. By the way, that was just in the creation of this, right? That was me taking my compass, bringing it over here. Looks like we got some over here. Uh, it looks like I can continue, right? It looks like there's a possible square here with both of those links, or a possible square here with the entire link. Sorry, you guys can't see that. My paper's a little off, but also I think the camera's on level. There we go. But obviously we've got to make some decisions here. Now, I told you to exhaust this, right? So normally I would exhaust this myself, but I do have a meeting in about 10 minutes. So let's say I did exhaust myself. This is it. This is all I can come up with. Even though there's still tons to write that I can still take, things like that. Um, now I want to go back with something a little darker, say in my case, like a 3B. And like I was saying before, this will be our construction base, but essentially what we really, really want is of course straight lines. Let's get that just right. And of course, take them all the way across the page. A little bit darker, a little bit easier to see. Um, gosh, it would really have helped to have that triangle. Don't try this at home. At least the way that I'm doing it. Again, this is where we don't want to get confused with, you know, those other guys, uh, those those weird cross sections, right? Again, now you can kind of see it, right? You can definitely see the darker line versus those construction lines. Um, that is definitely the point. To take only the ones that, of course, apply to the golden ratio. Again, I could have taken it further, especially if I had some better tools. I didn't forget to make my compass.
to get them all. Let's see if I forgot my phone. Is that? It is. This is what I mean. That's what I meant by a reminder, right? Because those are obviously are obvious, right? And of course they make these. And this whole thing, of course, as you guys know, gets super confusing. So it's really important to give you the, those little reminders. And I forgot to give myself a reminder on this one, but it is the golden ratio. So for the most part, I didn't do so well in uh, obviously exhausting, right? But hopefully this helps immensely, right? At least some tips and tricks um, drafting wise to to create this. Now naturally I'll talk about this on Friday, um, but the next part of our assignment is we're essentially gonna take a smaller square, not this small of course, actually 10 by 10, and essentially what we'll do is we'll move it around, right? And we'll start to either line up the frame or not line up the frame, right? But essentially what we want to get is some new lines for our composition. In fact, if you look outside of the hallway and look at Professor Bohuslav's class, you'll see a similar grid. Basically, we're going to choose some lines. Of course, not like this. I'll go over it on Friday. But we're essentially going to create new grids, right? Co new compositions based on the golden ratio, right? How interesting now the compositions and balance they just might be. Either way, hope this helps. Of course, feel free to go backwards in time. Watch it as many times as you like, and be ready to turn in Friday morning. Please reach out if you have any other questions, um, and good luck, guys.